Welcome back or welcome to my channel. I don't know how you got here, but I am so glad you're here. I hope you stick around and smash that subscribe button before the end of this video and click that little bell to all. That way you'll be notified whenever YouTube sends out notifications. Now, the reason why I say it like that is because we know YouTube don't send out notifications every single time I upload because I upload a lot. Okay, a lot. Just keep that in mind, and also be sure to let me know in the comments if you got notified for this video. And speaking of, it's a lot to discuss about Naomi Judd, child. She done left Winona and Ashley with nada. Zilch. She said, <laughs> I'm going to show y'all better than I can tell you. <laughs> Don't support me in my mental health journey. Yeah, you'll see. You'll see. Now, shout out to Yahoo News for this article we're about to read because they do a good job of kind of getting everything together. All the facts, all their ducks are in a row. I like to read articles where all the ducks are in a row, so I give credit where credit is due. Here we go. Naomi Judd cut daughters Ashley and Winona out of $25 million wheel. Singer Naomi Judd cut her daughters Ashley Judd and Winona Judd out of her $25 million wheel earlier this year. The country music community was shocked and saddened to hear that Naomi had lost her long battle with mental illness and taken her own life at the age of 76. In a surprising decision, Naomi left her estate and fortune which is reported to be around $25 million to her husband, Larry Strickland, whom she married in May of 1989. The Blast was able to confirm the existence of the court document, which states, I nominate and appoint my spouse, Larry Strickland, as executor of my estate. The document continues, In the event... My spouse ceases or fails to serve, then I nominate and appoint my brother-in-law, Reginald Strickland, and Daniel Chris Waiter as co-executors. I direct that no bond shall be required of my executor. RadarOnline.com, which first broke the news, reported that Winona is upset at her mother's decision. Winona and Naomi made up the country music duo that performed together as the judge and believed she was a major force behind her mother's success. She, Winona, Winona, you better not have done that, girl. Winona, if it wasn't for your mama giving birth to you, you wouldn't even be here, okay? Winona, if it wasn't for Naomi, your ass wouldn't be here. So how dare you? How entitled do you have to be, Winona, to say that you were a major force behind your mama's success? Girl, I would never. I would be ashamed to speak those words. And that right there, just look, just knowing that Winona was so quick and easy to say that about her mama, you know what that tells me? You know what that tells um, Let's get through this, and then I'm going to tell you my thoughts, Okay. As Page Six reported, the document did not state if either of Naomi's two daughters were named as benefici beneficiaries of any of her assets. Spoiler alert. Naomi and Winona were nowhere in the will. Okay. Uh-uh. They wasn't even in the will, y'all. Which leads me to my thoughts here in a minute. Just, st just stay tuned, y'all. It's a lot. But, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. In the court document... Naomi asked that her husband have full authority and discretion over any property that is an asset to her estate without the approval of any court or permission from any beneficiary of the estate. In the documents, Naomi also asked for her husband to receive reasonable comp compensation for his services and that he would be reimbursed for all reasonable expenses, advances, and disbursements, including attorneys and accountants' fees made or incurred in the administration of my estate. As Page Six reported, Melissa Sitzler, a senior account manager at a Tennessee law firm called 
Wider and Associates, and another individual named Abigail Mulder signed as witnesses when the document was created on November 20th, 2017. They could attest that Naomi was of sound mind, memory, and understanding, and not under any restraint or in any respect incompetent to make a last will and testament. In May, her daughter Ashley disclosed that Naomi had passed away of a self-inflicted firearm wound as per Variety. Ashley had appeared on Good Morning America and spoke with Diane Sawyer about her mother's tragic passing. She used a weapon, a firearm, she recalled, her voice wavering with emotion. So that's the piece of information we're very uncomfortable sharing. Ashley said that she felt wanted to decl- that she felt wanted to disclose the details surrounding her mother's sudden death to highlight the importance of mental health and provide fans who need help the resources they need to help wait a minute, to find help before it's too late. Well, I find it ironic that y'all ain't said a word about mental health since, and this is the only time you spoke about it. So, yeah, that's not making a lot of sense. But, I mean, does any of these celebrities make sense in what they said? Their contradictions, yeah, it's is real. And I quote, Ashley said, When you're talking about mental illness, it's important to distinguish between the loved one and the disease. Ashley explained, adding, My mother knew that she was seen and she was heard in her anguish and she was walked home. I find it mighty rich of Ashley judd to say that her mother was seen and heard her mother knew that she was seen and heard how are you going to speak for your mama huh if you don't suffer mental illnesses or you don't know the struggle of mental issues you ain't got a clue what your mama knew and what she didn't know okay ain't got a effing clue and that right there that right there. Did you ever hear Winona or Ashley speaking out in support of their mother and her mental health struggle while she was alive? That's very telling. And you know why I'm bringing it up? Because I am one of the many who battle mental issues every day, every minute of every day. Literally just had a breakdown. I just I don't, I don't feel... I don't have a good feeling about it, about Ashley saying, my mother knew that she was seen and she was heard in her anguish. What? Clearly she didn't, or she wouldn't have done this, Ashley. I mean, this is my issue, okay? Since I battle with a lot, a long list, I've been diagnosed with mental illnesses, long list of them, okay? So let me go ahead and explain some things. A lot of us that deal with these issues every day, every day, we're not seen. We don't feel seen and we don't feel heard. We also don't feel support. I mean, that's just part of it. That's reality. Deal with it. I mean, if we did, we wouldn't be battling the shit we're battling. So for Ashley to kind of just, you know, I don't know. It's just a lot for me. Like, I'm sitting over here like, no, no, uh uh-uh. Don't y'all do this shit. Because when she was alive and when Naomi was dealing with her battles, Ashley and Winona never spoke about it. Naomi spoke about it. Naomi spoke very open about it and talked about her struggles. They never spoke about it. You notice now they ain't spoke about it but like once during Ashley's interview, right? Yeah. I'm telling y'all, everything ain't a coincidence. In 2016, Naomi Judd told Good Morning America that she... See? Naomi, in 2016, Naomi herself went on Good Morning America to talk openly about her struggles with mental illness. 2016... How many times have you heard Ashley or Winona speak about mental health? Have we seen them, you know, post anything about mental health? Their own mother was dealing with it. She felt alone and not heard. Did they say anything? Nope. That's very telling. 
And if you battle mental illnesses on a daily, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, in 2016, Naomi told Good Morning America that she suffered from extreme and severe depression. At the time, she described how her depression only got worse when she and Winona stopped touring after she was diagnosed with hepatitis C. Fans see me in rhinestones, you know, with glitter in my hair. That really is who I am, she told host Robin Roberts at the time. But then I would come home and not leave the house for three weeks, not get out of my pajamas, and not practice normal hygiene. It was really bad. So, um, Ashley says that her mother was seen and heard in her anguish. Well, her mother said otherwise. Okay. When I came off the tour, I went into... And see, her mama talked openly about it. So, if her mama said she failed to lie, why is Ashley over here saying... She knew she was seen and heard. Girl, please. Girl, you're really pissing me off because you trying, you just basically sweeping this disease under the rug. Like, yeah, it's just another thing. I mean, no, no. <laughs> uh-uh. Maybe that's why y'all didn't get left with nothing. I'm just saying facts is facts. Naomi clearly didn't get seen or heard. Or y'all would have got left something in her will. I'm just saying. That speaks volumes, too. That same year, Naomi wrote a book called River of Time, My Descent into Depression and How I Emerged with Hope. In her candid memoir, she confessed that she had seriously considered taking her own life on a bridge near her farm. Larry says that Naomi was fragile before her sudden passing. This was her at the, um, I believe at the CMT Awards. That was like a week or two before this had happened. A week, I believe. In May, CMT aired a Naomi Judd, A River of Time special that gave fans another look at the contributions Naomi made to country music. Her husband of 33 years, Larry Strickland, described Naomi as fragile in the days leading up to her death. So if her husband is saying that she was fragile, she was fragile, her daughter is saying, well, she knew she was seen and heard. She was okay. She was walked home. She knew she was seen and heard. Her husband saying she was fragile. This ain't adding up. This is two different states that you're in. You get what I'm saying? If you're fragile, you're not confident in you're being seen and heard, okay? That's totally different. Naomi never met a stranger, Larry said, as reported by People. Much to my displeasure, she would start a conversation with anyone who made eye contact with her, and we would end up standing 10, 20, 30 minutes on the sidewalk while she talked to a complete stranger about their passions and their dog. He described a time when Naomi flew alone from Austria to Nashville for the Country Music Hall of Fame ceremony, which took place only one day after she took her own life. Larry noted that it was unusual for his wife to fly alone. I was really scared to death about her flying all alone all the way from Vienna back to Nashville because I knew how fragile she was, he recalled. Well, she made the flight home back to Nashville without any problem. During the flight, Naomi had apparently struck up a conversation with the man who was sitting next to her. The man sent Larry an email shortly afterward calling meeting Naomi a relief and a comfort. Obviously, I didn't know Naomi at all, but I can tell you she spoke highly and warmly of you and the life you shared together, the letter had said. Rest assured, she loved you and had no qualms about telling me, a stranger on a plane, that was so. The man told Larry about the measure and impact that Naomi left on him. Larry called the heartfelt message a great, great pleasure and comfort to me. Those interested can click here to read further updates, along with the family's attorney speculating why Naomi decided not to name her daughters in her will. Okay, let me tell you why I think she decided to cut Naomi and Ashley. Uh, I mean, Naomi decided to cut Ashley and Winona out of the will. Because they didn't ever speak about Naomi and her mental illness. Never. Never. Never in public. Never in interviews, never in private, 
never made a post about mental health advocacy, never made any mental health charity, you know, recommendations that people need to, you know, sponsor, um, donate to, look into, educate themselves more. They never posted anything about mental illness or mental health. And their mother was basically the spokesperson for mental issues. That is why they got cut out. And that is coming from somebody who deals with a lot of mental issues. Okay, I'm going to go and tell you. I'm going to go and tell you. I don't give a shit if you blood, if me and you are thick as thieves, if you don't support me in my journey, you damn well will not get anything from me when I'm gone. Uh Uh-uh. Because in my opinion, you didn't have my best interest in mind when I was here. You damn sure ain't getting my goods while I'm gone. I mean, you get what I'm saying. Mm-mm. Naomi wasn't dumb, okay? She was sick. She was going through a lot, okay? The the mental hell it is on your mind and body is just, it, it's indescribable. The fact that Winona had the cojones to get her red-haired ass up there and say that she was the reason behind her mama's success? Winona, your ass wouldn't even be alive if it wasn't for your mama. How about you give your mama the respect she deserves? That's my whole point. Ashley doing that interview, they never gave her the respect while she was alive. They still ain't said nothing about mental health and the struggles of it and the impact of it. They have the platform. They have been given the tools. God has given them the platform. God gave them a following. God said, here, people need to hear this. And they will not talk about it. That's why they got cut out of the wheel. I mean, I ain't got no sympathy for people who out here who don't understand mental health and who don't try to understand it. I mean, look, I know this is the South. And I know as well as anybody dealing with mental issues and being in the South. I know how taboo it can be to go to therapy or to even talk about your mental issues. And the reason why I say it like that is because it's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Barbie just had a meltdown. She is talking about her mental issues. Oh, my God. Clutching my pearls. Let's go to church Sunday and then talk about her behind her back all through the week. I'm a southerner. Okay. My family runs a church. I know how it works. I know how life works. It's sad. It's very sad. And that's why I will continue. As long as God gives me a voice and a platform, I will continue to talk about these topics that should be addressed and should be talked about. Absolutely. Do you know that it could help somebody out there struggling feel not so alone? As long as I can help one person, that's what I'm here for. Y'all let me know what you think in the comments below. Hashtag rest in peace, Naomi Judd. Y'all smash that subscribe button if you have not already and click that bell to all. Don't forget to thumbs up and share this video. I really, really would appreciate it. I love you so much for watching and I will see y'all in my next video. Also, how many times can I say video in one video? A lot. (laughs) Bye y'all.